Welcome to episode 161. These smiles on these faces, we are here today because we are going to bust your winter blues. Knock them out, take them down, get rid of them because we know it's about to be February and that's when these winter blues set in and we ladies at Sea Chat say, oh, heck no. Heck no. Yeah. Well, I say something a little different, but I swear a lot, so. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, but you know, if you start with our normal talk, then I got to put the little bleeps in the episode, and we know how that goes. Then it's like so every other word. editing for Samantha. Yeah. <laughs> You're causing Molly a lot of work with all that bleep. Jeez Louise. Jeez Louise. I, I want to start by saying one thing about winter blues, because I did have a bluey moment the other night with the realization Libby texted us to tell us, and I actually went and watched the episode, and I just want to put a shout out to our friends, Angie and Kristen, who have made the tough decision at the end of 2023 to no longer do Let's Do Lunch podcast. And I can only imagine, and you saw it in their faces, how difficult that was. So I wanna start by giving a shout out to those ladies for doing the hard stuff, which goes with our previous episode about letting it go. I I couldn't believe it. I listened to it after we recorded that episode. And I'm like, oh my gosh, it's like we recorded that episode for them and we didn't even know it. Right? Yeah. So if you guys haven't gone over to Let's Do Lunch podcast, um, YouTube page, listen to their final episode. They are still going to be jamming in the reselling world, girls. Boys, yep. we're not losing them. They are and he resells and a rural squirrel. They they won't go anywhere themselves. They're just not quite together in that way. But they're still besties, yeah. so that's yeah. cool. <laughs> and they that's the best part of all. Yeah, they still do memberships and stuff for like they do lives and all kinds of other stuff. But mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just want to put that shout out because that was a little blue moment when I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. But you know, I at the same time the pride. Good for them. I, so. I, yeah, that had to be just one of the most difficult, heart wrenching things. I can't even you could imagine. Tell. You could tell in their voices and their their tears. It was a tough, tough thing, but they're making the best choice for themselves. And uh, yeah, you'll still see them, and you'll see them on our page on our show because you know we'll still have them. And heck, we're doing our reseller retreat with them, so <laughs> there'll be a lot of fun coming out of that one. <laughs> And then, yeah, that's a good point. Like knowing, knowing when you have too much on your plate and setting those priorities and those boundaries, because saying yes to all the things, I mean, we talked in our last one about letting things go and what to say no to, but that is, that's a very healthy thing because if you are, you have too many things and you're never going to give all those things, all the attention they deserve. And then that's going to make you feel so much more blah because you, you're just constantly juggling and struggling. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Juggling and struggling. Listen to her making rhymes. <laughs> Before you know it, she's not just going to be making line dances. She's going to be rapping for us. So. Oh, my gosh. You know, I mean, Eminem is from your neck of the woods, isn't he? Yes. And I'm so bummed. I am not. a. I love football. Not a huge into like a certain NFL team. But I was really looking forward to to Eminem going up against Taylor Swift in the Super Bowl. That's it's not about right? you know the Chiefs and the Lions. It was about Eminem and Taylor Swift. <laughs> See, that's that's the feminine way to look at it, right? Like when I was a kid, everybody like, "What's your favorite team?" Like the purple one. Yeah, the Vikings. I loved the Vikings for so long because they have the most beautiful shade of purple. It's the, it's the purple team or the blue team or the yeah yeah. All right, so let's talk about these winter blues. Like, seriously, it's the end of January. We know it's normal for a lot of people come January, February to start getting to those winter blues. The holidays are over. You went into the new year with your big goals, right? If you're Mm -hmm. in our Patreon, we've got your goals. It's written and recorded, and we are keeping you focused on those goals. But, you know, there's so many other things that will just get you blue. And, uh, yeah, how we handle that, ladies? Lots of different ways, mostly with you ladies, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm going to say it because we talk about it, our, our motivation in minutes, getting okay. up every weekday morning and spending 10 minutes with my friends, getting our hustle on, motivating each other, saying what we're grateful for, just it's, 
it keeps me focused every day. In fact, on Saturdays and Sundays, I, I, I miss it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do too. I do too. I get to that point where I'm like, wait a minute. I mean, where are my people? Where are my people? And I used to like, you know, those Monday morning things like, okay, it's Monday morning. And a lot of people would be negative about Monday morning. And then you have people that are like, it's Monday. And I would kind of go back and forth on Mondays. It just depend. Now I'm like, I can't wait for Monday because I got to see my people in the morning. Like I got to get up. Like Nick didn't wake me up this morning. He was being very quiet. What? I know, trying not to wake me up. And all of a sudden I wake up and I'm like, wait a minute. He showered and dressed. I'm like, what time is it? Like, did I miss my girls? <laughs> He's like, no, no, it's 740. I'm like, oh, thank God. Like, I can't miss my girls. Like, I got to get up. I got to get my brain ready. I got to buy a I got to get my word of intention for the day because it's Monday and I got stuff to get done. So it's a great way. And even if you're not a member of something, a group like our Patreon, you yourself can wake up every morning and come up with your word of intention and just stick with it. It, All three of us as witnesses and, and the friends that are in our group say it, I, I mean, at least three times a week when we go through the one word, one thing you're grateful for comes up with, this group and what we do and you just have to be because it just gets you going man you're ready to roll so what are some of the words of intentions intention you guys have used uh, if you don't mind sharing them yeah oh well you know what i have right here <laughs> i have my journal so i oh. can tell you some from way back when because you know when you put me on the spot y'all see many episodes where libby asked me a question <laughs> Crickets chirping, right? Like I, my brain has, what, what she just asked me and what's the answer? Well, I got it written down here. I have plan as one, focus, list, win, balance. Balance is there a couple of times. Mm -hmm. Create, organize, step. Look at this. Step is one day and then you flip to the next day. Keep stepping. <laughs> yeah, get those steps in. Self care. Yeah, there's a lot of goodies in here. When we do more than one word for our word of intention, we have to say it really fast. Self care. Yeah, <laughs> Self -care. you have to kind of mush it together because you only get one word. <laughs> you only get one word. One day, so my name is. Get it done. You got to go get it done. Get it done. Okay. <laughs> oh, I forgot you did get it done a couple times. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> I think Jason did it first because I think I did it the day after him because I was like, it's it's just such a good thing. Like, I like the get her done because you just got to get it done. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, like, my, my word most Mondays is mojo because yeah. I love Monday mornings. I wake up. I'm like, boom, it's a fresh week. I'm good to go. And I'm just, I'm usually happier Monday mornings. It's just, I just have all this freshness. The The week is my canvas. <laughs> and so I use Mojo on Mondays to remind myself as the day goes on and it's gray outside or I have things come up or I feel like I'm not getting enough done. I remember that Mojo is my word and we can dance and we have a little Mojo dance and we do our thing. So sometimes it's just, it's whatever's going to remind you of your, your goal or I mean your intent for the day. My intent is to keep my Mojo flowing. Yeah. 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 And when you've got a great supportive group that you've created, like say, whether it's a group like ours or you make your own in your neighborhood or wherever, however, if you all know each other's word of intention, the great thing is you can remind each other throughout the day. Like if you know somebody has a morning where you're like, they said it, but you can tell they're kind of like when you talk to them about what are your plans? Well, I'm not quite sure yet. Then you can shoot them a little text later in the day and say things like mojo dance, you know. And, <laughs> and you like even if Samantha's in the middle of the grocery store, she will stop and do a little dance. <laughs> Throw out a little mojo dance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but what a great way to keep the positivity going so that mm -hmm. the negativity or the winter blues, the gray skies, the the bad feedback on your eBay listing or the thing that's getting returned that you really hope wouldn't, that those things just become a thing. It's a thing. Things happen. Yeah. Right? I mean, I, like think about it. And we talk about this in the book club and the slight edge. We didn't quite get there yet, but everybody has hurdles, right? Like we all have crap we're dealing with and we, we do. And some of it's, some of it's quite intense at times. But for me to set that aside in the morning and come on and hear about how everybody is positive and how everybody is 
even if they're not positive, going to take steps to get there. Yeah. And that's what our word uh, step was about that day. Um, what what are you going to do? But because just seeing that that positivity and the you know we're all dealing with stuff, but to take that ten minutes and really focus on something you're grateful for and your intention for the day is just you can kind of just block out some of that, some of those hurdles, some of that stuff that's going on in your life. And it's a game changer. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't mean, cause I don't want to say like, we're all happy and positive all the time, all right. the way, but this is 10 minutes where we, we get to forget about or put that to the side and really focus on some positive uh, yeah. things. So, and I think and that's, then, go ahead, go ahead. And then, and then take that 10 minutes throughout the day so that if, if that 10 minutes is positive and it's setting your day up, you boom, we're good to go. Your first couple hours are just, you're going to ride on that, that positivity high. And then when things start to slump, we can look back at like, no, my word was focus or, you know, oh, it was, you know, Karen's word was regroup and that was great. And maybe, you know, think you can think about that 10 minutes you had and that should keep you going throughout the day, but all those positive thoughts and the, the goodness. This is why it's important to write it down, whether you have our daily intention journal or you just have a journal of your own. If you write it down every morning, first of all, putting anything in writing makes it stick in your brain better. But then you also know you can go back and revisit it if the day got hectic and you're like, wait a minute, what was my start of the day? Go back to that book or wherever you wrote that and it will just immediately take you back to where you need to be by reading it all over again. And you're like, oh, that's where my put mind it on a sticky was. note. Put it on a sticky note where you'll see it. Put it on a sheet of paper. Mm -hmm. write, write it on, it on, on the back a of your memo hand. board on the back of your hand. Right? You don't Not need anything front. fancy. Don't put it on your palm. If you're <laughs> there you go. Write it on your forehead. If you put it on your palm, you might actually accidentally get that on one of the items you're photographing. So don't do that. Mm -hmm. Back of the hand, forehead. You know, there's many places. <laughs> Oh my gosh. But well, I, I know that, something you did. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, I think that there are things that, I mean, we all have, like you were saying, we all have our issues. It's finding the right place to let go of those issues and knowing what spaces are the right spaces and what spaces are not the right spaces. And I think for a lot of us, especially small business owners and especially small business owners with social media presence it's sometimes hard to keep those lines drawn mm. and i think it's very important that you do keep those lines drawn like i know so the three of us i know if i'm having a really bad morning i can call these girls or call my best friend lauren and say oh my gosh this is what's going on and it's my safe space to let it all out and sometimes that's all you need to do is talk to that safe space and get out whatever it is that's bothering you and then I know that when I get to my next step, whether it's, you know, motivation in minutes or whatever your next step is, I've had my outlet and now I'm ready because I know that space is not the space for that. This space is for me to go now, what am I doing? Like, yeah. what's my step, right? Mm -hmm. So I always think about that because we talk about our social media presence and how my biggest soapbox is being authentic. And it is, you need to be authentic. But that doesn't mean that you need to be authentic with every single thing all the time in every space of your life. There's professionalism, there's your business, there's your personal, there's like your social media for you showing who you are can be Samantha walking diamond or we've put Libby walking chummy, you know, mm -hmm. you and your dog or you and your mom having lunch or you and... I don't know, think of your kids going sourcing together, your mm -hmm. living room update of th new things you put in there and where, you know, what small business you bought them from. And there's so many positive ways to let people know who you are and feel very connected with you. Yeah, and like we really showed good. me walking the dog. We didn't show me on um, when the snow was higher than him and him having accidents in the house. Did not show that on right. social media. Me freaking out. We didn't. <laughs> I didn't mention that on social media, right? Because that's I not. I, oh, no, I don't know. We might have gone viral with that one. I don't know. <laughs> that one day, I was like, my goal for the day was to take Diamond out for some fresh air, and we had ten minutes be between meetings, and I was like. We're walking. There's a park across the street. I'm like, we're going to walk across the street. She'll get five minutes to run around and we'll come back. 
I ran in here huffing and puffing, I think a couple minutes late, logged on with you guys, and I'm like, she pooped on the sidewalk. Like, we couldn't even make it across the street. She pooped on the sidewalk. I got a big dog. That's a big poop. It was a whole... But no, what did I share? The cute little video of her running in the park because we got a couple minutes in the fresh air. And that doesn't mean that you're not going to talk about it and have coffee with your buddies and go, oh my gosh, you wouldn't believe what my dog did today, right? But you're probably not going to throw that on your business page, social media. There's like right. a difference. There's, you yeah. want to keep that personal yet professional. So, you know, there's a way to talk about um, feedback and negative feedback that you get on your account. And then there's a way not to talk about negative feedback mm. that you get on your account. I mean, let's talk about that. We all get it. What's the, you know, how do you, it, it's a reality, right? So like in a business like ours and other teaching businesses and places like that, you want to share, this is my negative feedback, but there's a, a do and a don't in doing that. Like, yeah, I, and you have to really think about your your customers. Like, is that going to keep them your customer? Is that something they are interested in? Like, all right, so would my customer be interested if I got negative feedback on eBay and what it said? No, they wouldn't. And it wouldn't encourage them to continue to shop with me. Yeah. And even for a consignment chats group, if I if we can use it as a teaching moment and say, you know, we got this negative feedback, but this is how we, res we responded, um, you know, and spin it to that that positive. Like, this is how you can turn that into a, a good customer service time mm -hmm. or, you know, how, how do you guys handle this? Or and have a conversation, a discussion, something that's productive and people are going to get something out of it. If it's right. just a rant session, I before I post in groups or my page or any of that stuff, I try to think of what I want out of a group and I... I will leave a group if it is bogging me down, if it's too negative, if, if it's too much. I especially went through that when I first was diagnosed with my paralyzed stomach. I didn't know anything about gastroparesis and I joined 25 groups on Facebook and I was active in all of them and asking questions and talking to people. And I don't think I'm a member of any of them now because it's just all a bunch of people complaining about how terrible their stomachs are instead of like, Hey, but I found out that bananas are really good for my tummy and I can eat them. And it, you know, like it's, if you right. can say bananas make me feel bad, but chicken doesn't and it helps somebody, that's one thing. But if you're just there to complain and boo hoo, that's right. what I don't ever want to come across that way. I want to be helpful and productive. You want to be so I'm chuckling. Right? Yeah, I'm chuckling. chuckling because when I first got diagnosed with my autoimmune disease with Hashimoto's, somebody told me, oh, you got to get on this group and get on that group and get on this group. And it literally took me about three weeks. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I can't anymore. Like, it was like, you know, I got a pimple on my cheek. Is this Hashimoto's? I think it's Hashimoto's. Like, my toenail fell off. It's Hashimoto's. My hair is frizzy today. It's Hashimoto's. No, that's humidity, honey. It's not Hashimoto's. Like, and yeah. everybody would get in there and go, oh, my God, it happened to me, too. It's horrible. It's, and I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, I can't, I can't take this anymore, you know? Like, I just can't do it. And I had to... Um, I had to leave several of those because it was just, it ended up being a bunch of people commiserating together instead of positively coming up with solutions. And if somebody did come up with a solution, there'd be a bunch of like haters going to hate. Right. Yeah. And it was just like, ugh, I don't. And that's why I love what we try to do with our community is keep it very positive, uplifting. Um, we've said it a million times all of our answers, we feel very, the three of us have different ideas on things, the same subject often. And every everybody's idea is valid, but you need to put it out there in a way that doesn't down other people and make them feel like their idea isn't valid, right? Yes. And I like to think of like when I was a, a manager at the hospital, um, if my employees had a problem because, you know, you're when you're managing people, there's you know, some people don't get along or this happens or whatever. If they had an issue, they also needed to have some sort of solution. They could not just come to me and just whine every week or every day because some people would. They would just come and complain, complain, complain. Okay, how are we going to fix that? How should I help you with that? How, like, what do you need from me? What can fix this situation? And that's what I like to think about when posting or doing this stuff. Like, okay, right. I want to be real and say, I got negative feedback this morning because I did. I got negative feedback this morning. 
It's driving me nuts. Oh, you did. Oh, let's talk Everyone. about it in a constructive way. A seven dollar lot of Lincoln Logs. Oh, <laughs> oh no. not the Lincoln Logs. No. And and the the yeah yeah is driving me nuts. It's seven dollars. They never reached out to me. They never like it's clearly in my photos and in my description that one of the logs was a half log, and he he left terrible feedback this morning on a seven dollar thing. If he'd have reached out, I'd have been like, sorry, I thought that I explained that very well, and I, I would have refunded him his seven freaking dollars. Right. <laughs> but I took a deep breath and I messaged him and I asked him how we can make this work and you know did did the whole customer service thing, but. And hopefully he will respond and I have some wonderful thing to say about this in 24 hours, right. which is why I am mentioning it here because I'm frustrated, but I'm not going to go and rant about it or do whatever until I have some sort of solution or a learning experience from it, or I don't know what, some sort of silver positive lighting that I right. can't see at the moment. But right. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, somewhere it's going to be there. <laughs> it's going to happen somewhere. <laughs> But that's yeah. how I get through is also is looking at the future. Like, yeah. look, look ahead and you can't dwell on things that are happening now. Okay. My other Lincoln logs, do they have good enough photos? Is it clear enough that some of these pieces don't all match or whatever it is? Just learn from it and keep going. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. I, uh, here's a, here's a good way to make the distinction, right? You would put up a constructive thing with C chats because Correct. Debbie would want to know, our mm -hmm. ideal customer would want to know, but your ideal customer for sorting with Samantha for your They're business, never gonna know. They're they will never, never know. And it should no. be that way. So make that, you know, make that distinction. If you're in a reseller group or you're on your business page or you're dealing with a customer, definitely, you know, change your hat, put your different hat on, know who you're talking to. It, yeah. yeah and your I'm ideal not customer. <laughs> and I'm not going to log into motivation in minutes tomorrow morning and say, oh, my word of intention today is feedback because I got negative feedback yesterday and I'm just going to think about feedback today and, and dwell on it because some people do that. And that is so crazy. Like, no, I'm going to move forward, find something positive, something with a good intention. <laughs> I like that you even said, like, it, it, what does it take? You need to go back and you're going to go back and check your other Lincoln log listings just to be sure that they're very clear. Now, granted, you probably were very clear in them. And it's just that random customer that doesn't understand. I mean, we've talked about this in the past. A lot of customers don't understand that you're a small business. Like they don't think of it that way. They're used to buying from the Amazons and the fast, fa you know, places. Mm -hmm. And they just don't understand that that one little feedback actually really affects our small business. But you haven't taken the deep breath and then typed him out a professional response, hopefully will in return bring you a professional courteous response and you can move forward with something. Yeah. The alternative wouldn't and end well. <laughs> the other side of it is I'm going to do, do my best to settle this and, and talk to him at this level and then if, you know, in a few days he hasn't responded, there's nothing there, then I will reach out to eBay and I will explain it to them. And, I, you know, like I'll, I'll follow the channels. And if nothing happens and it's negative on my account, then it's negative on my account. And I need to just make sure I could. You, you can't avoid all of them. And you just got to do your best to do the best that you can. That's and it. And I will give you the advice to actually respond to the feedback. Yes, eBay. After, not yet. Not yet. After yeah. you've exhausted all of your other options, yeah. because once you respond to that feedback, it it's good. It shows other customers like, oh, that they see both sides of the situation. However, once you respond to that feedback, it cannot be removed. Yeah. So people I do think they changed that very, very recently. Really? But let's be yeah. sure before you but, do anything. But different. don't take my they could have changed it back, but I did have one um removed after the fact. Oh. Um now it does get removed if that user is removed. So if that user is removed, their the feedback user was happens. not removed. Okay. But uh, definitely wait until after you do yeah. all channels because they have a tendency to not be consistent with their customer service policies sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I just got an exception because I'm going to be on the eBay for Business podcast. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> 
is kind of special. <laughs> thing. <laughs> Totally. But you know, think about it too. And I, I am one to get emotional in the moment. Like Libby knows that's me. That's why I never react. I, I am not a reactor in the moment. You and I, you can say the most God awful thing to me and you're going to get this from me when you do it, because I don't react when so, I just don't. Yeah. But look out a little while later. <laughs> so my whole rule is sit on it for 24 hours, like pause and think it through because 99% of the time I realize I really took it the wrong way or I was in a mood or they really weren't saying it that way. And then that 0.1% I've settled myself down and can go back and confront them in a positive way instead of a heat of the moment, angry way. And I try to remind myself that with the things with customer service and negative feedback things is to sit on it for a little bit and then remind myself, even if the, in the end, it doesn't come out the way I hoped it was, even if I gave it my best hundred percent, every ounce Southern syrup sweetness, and it still didn't come out the way I wanted it. Bless to. your heart. Bless, Bless your heart. heart. Then I understand and remind myself that, you know what? Yes, it sucked, but it's one person out of thousands that are awesome. Exactly. And and let's, I think we that. are super susceptible to this because we work alone and yeah. something can get in your head and it can ruminate and it can bring you down and it can cause you such anxiety because you're by yourself and it's just in your head. And then like, Samantha, do you feel better after you just talked about the negative feedback with us or no? Yeah. 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 You need an outlet. A proper a community, outlet. a proper <laughs> outlet. Like Molly said, I wasn't even thinking about that when we were talking about like beating the winter blues, but so yeah. that's busting a, the winter blues. Busting the winter <laughs> blues. Yeah. So that's a double, a double thing though, too, because yes, you need a community, surround yourself with positive people, be able to talk to people and, and mm -hmm. put those things out there. Like-minded people. I could talk to this about my husband and he'd be like, well, that guy from Ohio is a jerk. Tell him to screw up. Like, oh, yeah, yeah he'd get you all riled up, wouldn't he? <laughs> right. Like, well, it doesn't work that way, honey. That's not how it goes because other pieces don't understand. Right. But um, the other side of it is when you're when your people are putting only positive things out there and they're trying to to show the good and stuff and do all that then people start playing that compare game too. And that can make you extra blue if you're seeing good stuff and you're, oh, I'm not doing that good or, oh, I'm not. So make sure that you stay out of your own head and only compare to yourself. Compare and grow as yourself. Yes. I think my, my mom said it the other day that she's only comparing herself to who she was yesterday and making sure that that person continues to grow and and learn. Yeah. Good yeah. for her. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. That's and one way we beat the winter. Oh, sorry, Molly. I was just, I just saying that's a sound piece of advice. Yep. So that came out of the biggest blues buster that we have done. And I think it was the list of Palooza you planned, the winter warm up list of Palooza, Molly. How was that, y'all? I mean, seriously. It was great. <laughs> ah! That was so much fun. <laughs> It was amazing. And just to be like working and hustling alongside so many other dedicated uh, business owners and resellers was so inspiring. Yeah. And, oh. Yeah. I just loved it. And you know what I did not see in all of the comments in our private com consignment chats community of all the posts that we had through three days of list of palooing. I didn't see anybody unless I missed it say I only listed X amount. There was one person that said, and it just warmed to my heart. She said, she typed in, I went back and edited my, I went back at backspace because I typed, I only did. And then I thought of Molly and I was like, do, 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 no backspace. I did, you know, I did every listing, <laughs> every single listing deserves a celebration, every single listing. Uh, and yes. so were there some impressive numbers put out there? A hundred percent. Mm -hmm. But I am impressed with those that did three also, because you showed up and you right. did listings. You could have done nothing. Yeah. You could have. But Absolutely. You easily. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But you didn't. And then you got people who sourced and listed in the same day. Ah, oh, 
multitaskers. <laughs> <laughs> you can do that? Are you sure you can do that? That doesn't sound right to me. <laughs> well, I did it yesterday, but it didn't count because it wasn't a list of blues a day. But I did, of course, little came home and listed because I knew Samantha would get on me if I didn't get them listed. Good job. So, uh, yeah, but yeah, that list of Palooza is definitely a positive event that mm -hmm. everybody comes in in a great mood and I think leaves even on a bigger high than they entered this competition. I, I say that with quotes because, yes, it is. We do have winners, but it's really not like competition. It's, no, field. it's a reset. It's a reset. It doesn't feel like a competition. Everybody's getting together and listing and sharing what they're doing or even and you can you can share your roadblocks. You can say, "Why well, I didn't get the stuff listed yesterday cuz XYZ happened." As long as you have a plan to move forward and you're you got you got something that's going to get you through that roadblock, you're learning from it, you're moving on, you're you're being forward. We had a friend that got a migraine, but she still listed three items, took care of her migraine, and was showing up the next day to do more. Like, yep. stuff happens, right? Things yep. come up, whether it's physically, whether it's family, whether it's, it could be anything. But, you know. It was in how many, how, uh, quite a few people said, I didn't realize I could. Yes. yes. When, shout out to Nisha when she she said it on the post yesterday and she said it again oh, today okay. in our in our meeting and she said I listed this many which was an impressive number and I had no idea that I could list that many in one day. Yeah. I love that. Like that's a win. Yeah. She also won a prize because she had great numbers, but like that is a win all in itself. That's freaking awesome. And I think Ashley said the same thing in one of her posts too. She shocked her herself. Did. Yeah. 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 My mom had the most she'd ever listed in one day. Like people were setting records. So yeah. yeah. And who were they setting records with? Themselves. They beat their personal <laughs> records. They were growing and comparing to themselves. That's yeah. it. Yeah. That was so much fun. It really was. So find a find a community, a reseller community event. Go to a meetup. Like be, bust those winter blues. You know, surround and you yourself. You have to with find people. the right people. I mean, you may go to an event and realize that whole group isn't for you, or you might go to an event and realize that there's a portion of those people you're going to surround yourself with. It's finding the right fit for you and what you're mm -hmm. looking for. If you're looking to be woe is me, what I always call an Eeyore, if you're looking to be an Eeyore all the time, oh, they're out there. Oh, you can find them. Yeah. But you can also find the ones that aren't the Eeyores, that are the lift you up, that are there when you need them to be there. They'll listen and then they're going to help you pick yourself right back up and go, okay, look, I know this sucks. It sucks, but you know, where are we going with this? <laughs> what you yeah, mean? and you know, that goes back to our letting go episode last mm -hmm. was that last week? One yeah. episode 160, right? It's really hard to let go sometimes, but it's okay if you're with a group of people that is not supporting you and lifting you up, it is okay to walk away. In fact, it's more than okay to walk away. Is it easy? No, but you you need to do it. You need to do We've that all for done yourself. It. Yeah. I think everybody's walked away from people, situations that were hard to walk away from at this age and stage in our lives. I'm sure we've all done it at least once. And I think we'll all agree it's not easy. But yeah. the majority of us will agree if you're not if you're fresh out of the walk, but if you're any distance from that walk you made, it was the right thing and you feel good. And there's a weight lifted off your shoulder. Absolutely. And Lord knows I could do anything to get weight off my shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Tiffy Pie texted us after we recorded with her a few weeks ago. And she, mm -hmm. she said, girls, thank you for that talk. I, I did that thing. I, I yeah. got rid of that person. Yep. Mm -hmm. Proud of her. It can be done. Go, girl, go. Yep. Go, girl, go. All right. And what else do we have to hit on? So we talked about the groups, finding your community that supports you and lifts you up. Um, making sure that when you post things in your business that are personal, that they're properly personal posts, not <laughs> things that you really want your customers to know about you and see about you and feel about you when they look at you, because building that relationship is going to be what makes or breaks your business is the relationships mm -hmm. you build with people who want to support your business. So 
If you want those supporters and the people to love you, you got to, you know, not be fake. You be 100% of who you are. But, you know, you've got children. You don't share everything with your children that you do in your life. God, I hope you don't. If you do, maybe we should talk. No. <laughs> but, you know, you, you don't share everything with your parents. You don't share everything with your children. You don't share, you and know you what I mean? You share different have to things with each of those people. Correct. You're going to share so, some things with your parents that you don't share with your kids, but you share with your kids, but you don't share with so-and-so next door that you do. It's You have to just realize that relationship and what you're going for. Having the ideal customer really helps with that. I was going to say, how many resellers have we helped through the ideal customer? Because this is a, this is a common problem in the reselling world is with your business, are you talking to customers? Are you talking to other resellers? And a lot of people try to combine those two things and get very frustrated, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, no, are you talking to resellers? Are you talking to customers that are gonna buy your things? And, and kind of separate that out because they're two to very distinct groups. For most of us, they are two distinct groups of people. Some, yes. so, But some people have that person that is the reseller that is also their customer. Know who that is. Some people are like us and we have our businesses where we have our consignment customers and those ones. And then we have this because we needed that outlet of being able to talk about the other side of things. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. So we have to always look at our hats before we put them on, right? You got to turn them in and check the size and the label. Like, wait, oh yeah, this one goes here. Hats everywhere. We have <laughs> That's probably why we're going so hard on this topic is because it is something that the three of us have have struggled with, like what and before we did the ideal customers and did with Samantha, like who exactly are we talking to? What are we, yeah. you know, we have the business, we have C chats, we have all these different things, and it can get very muddy and ill-defined. Mm -hmm. Well, and and our purpose for consignment chats too makes it a, a hot topic because we started consignment chats because we want to educate people and help them grow and be there beside you as you walk your walk and hope that you're beside mm -hmm. us as we walk our walk with our businesses. And um, when you are doing that with somebody, you want to help them grow and see them grow. That doesn't mean they're not going to stumble, but you want them to pick themselves back up. And we're that's what we created this particular group for was a pick yourself up and move up upwards and onwards. So um, you know, we have a lot of people that came in struggling with what I call the e or syndrome and are totally different people now, like totally different people. And they're like, they, they listen to things, they take advice, they, they ask for advice and they actually implement the advice given. Like that's a huge thing, right? Huge mm -hmm. thing. And that's one of my big things. I'm all for everybody has problems and situations, but I don't like those that come with problems and situations, but then never listen to any of the advice that's given out by the group they give it to, right? Like, if you want to put it out there for help, be open to listen to the suggestions that are given to you because the majority of the people, especially in our community, are there because we want to help you and give you advice that, worked for us. So doesn't mean everything we give you is going to work for you. Hey, I've but. gotten some great advice. I've gotten some great advice in the community. Just I have shipped Melinda. like 24 items in less than an hour today. It would have taken me four hours wow. before I took that nice. advice. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. Yep. Yeah. It's, that's it's, amazing. it's yeah. And that's all because of advice I took. Yes. <laughs> that was freely given. Yes. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Gosh, so I, I wish I were. Kenny, I, I don't know. I'm going to say Kenny Rogers. Every hand's a winner and every hand's a loser, right? Like it's all about what you do with it. Just getting ready to say, I wish I had a quote to end this oh. on. <laughs> well, here, here comes Kenny. Yeah. Those words were coming out of my mouth and quote oh. queens put one out right then and there. Look at that. We got link lady and quote queen. <laughs> I just, I've been thinking about that so much as we work through, um, especially in our Patreon group, like we'll all come in with, you know, with, with pretty different hands, right? But everyone you can make a winner and everyone you can make a loser. It's really up to you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, ladies, on that note, 
Oh, I don't have a I'm going to have to say. Oh, I'm. I, <laughs> Uh, come on. I mean, do we do that was a great I was idea. I was thinking I wanted a taste of your whiskey for that advice. All right. <laughs> Did I just age myself like oh really my bad word. right now? Yes. First okay. concert I ever went to was a Kenny Rogers concert. Oh, all right. So oh. yeah, there we have it. There we go. Okay. Until it. next time, ladies. Cheers. <laughs> what are you cheering with? What is that? Freeze dried applesauce. <laughs> oh my gosh. I need to taste free dried applesauce. <laughs> it's almost as bad as Kristen's candle. Right? <laughs> Shout out a rural squirrel. Rural squirrel and her candle <laughs> cheers. <laughs> All right, y'all. We love you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for joining Libby, Molly, and Samantha, the ladies of Consignment Chats, as we build a resourceful community of collaborative resellers. Find all the ways to connect with us on consignmentchats.com. Episodes are available on YouTube and anywhere you get your podcasts. In addition, join our free private Facebook community.